Hello guys, today we'll have another small topic-based junior code review on a specific topic, or in fact two topics, try-catch and database transactions. And I want to show you one piece of code, one method sent by one of you guys via email and example of over-engineering. So there is such a thing among junior developers, as I've noticed, they try to write a better code, right? Which is great. But then they understand better code as using all the fancy design patterns that they can because seniors do that. And then they try to write code with every fancy feature they can so their code would look solid and senior-ish. And as a result, we can see a code like this, which works, but is highly over-engineered in my opinion. So we have a contact form and that contact form is submitted to the store method of a controller. All we need to do is to save the contact details and redirect to thank you page. Now what that developer did is used try catch and used database transaction for no particular reason in my opinion. I've done a few junior code reviews about CRUDs, so I will link them in the description below. And general saving data in Laravel is much more simple than this. But let's discuss one by one. We have three subtopics. One subtopic is try catch. Then we'll talk about database transaction. And then we'll talk about the structure of all that loop of what it is returned and when. So try catch is usually used when there is a chance that inside of this block, there will be some exception thrown. Now, what exception can be thrown in just saving the data? Well, there are two things used that could potentially throw exception parsing the date or cleaning the HTML with purifier, but it's quite a small chance and this should be in the validation somewhere. In general, when creating the eloquent record, there's a really small chance of exception. But in this case, in this particular example, the bad thing is not using try catch. The bad thing is how it is used. So what happens if there is some exception? What is done? Success equals false. And even PHP storm underlines or actually shows the success variable in invisible font because it's not used anywhere. So, okay, I set success to false and then immediately redirect, return redirect. So that's one, success false isn't actually used. And then return redirect route home without any error message. So you're just redirecting to home and won't tell to your customer, to your visitor what actually happened and whether that contact was created or not. Doesn't feel like a good user experience to me. So a better user experience would be to redirect back. Maybe it's the same route. I'm not showing the actual page because it's anonymous code review, but at least you should do with some message, for example, or error, and then go exception get message or your text message in your language, and then show that message somewhere. But my overall feeling is that this try catch is not actually being used properly, and it shouldn't be here you should use try catch when you're catching specific exceptions usually, or if your body of the try has quite a big chance of failing and you want to catch the exception and inform the user gracefully. My typical example is charging the customer. So anything related to payment. So try, charge the customer. If something goes wrong, then you catch exception of wrong card number, catch exception of not valid details or something, catch another exception and then redirect back with specific message. So that I would say is a typical example of try catch, but not just for saving the eloquent model. Okay, now let's go to DB transaction. Database transactions are usually used when there are two or more database statements in one and you want them to be executed as one statement. So for example, if you have update something, insert something, delete something, and one of them fails, they would be all rolled back. So transactions is for multiple database statements. Do you see a multiple database statement here? I don't. It's just a simple database operation. So in this case, we can safely delete that transaction like this. And in a minute, I will show you a better example within the same repository of try catch and transaction. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's clean up this method, finalize the cleanup. So what I would do in terms of structure, so this one will likely not fail. And if it does fail, it would fail in validation. So I would probably extend the validation, for example, required date here, or message should be required or something like that. And then if it fails, it would fail on validate and redirect back with 422 and with error back. And then if the validation passes, 
then we don't need success true here. We just save and return. Not even to view, I would return to redirect route. Thank you if it exists like this. Return route. Thank you or something. Because the post request result store or update or delete method should not be the view, should be taking the action and then redirect somewhere. Redirect back in case of error or redirect to some other page in case of success. So that would be my suggested store method. Of course, it could be optimized even more. So validation could become a form request class. This could be request validated. And then the controller would be much shorter. But that's a personal preference. You can watch other code reviews where I perform this optimization. Again, I will link that in the description below. Now let's take a look at ironically, the same developer within the same repository did a much better job in other controller. So we have another store method for patient request. And in one of the blocks of if else, we have this, the same structure, but makes much more sense. Try performing a few actions. One of them may fail because it has some private function. It has some delete. It has more logic than catch exception. Then we session flash the message. So we do redirect back to some route, but session would get the actual message of the error. Well, this is unnecessary, but still it's much better job. And in this case, the exception is actually being used. Great. And even DB transaction in this case makes sense because the patient is being created. Then we save some patient appointment. I'm not sure. I don't want to look what is inside, but there's probably another database operation. Then there's a third database operation of deleting something, deleting the contact. So I guess from the contact, there's a patient created and their appointment. So contact becomes actually the client of the clinic. And then if one of those operations actually fail, then it all rolls back. And in this case, DB transaction makes sense. Haven't actually tried if it works. Maybe there's an error inside somewhere in the logic, but generally structurally, this is a better example for DB transaction. And if you search my YouTube channel, I have a few videos already on transactions on database transactions. So I will link them both in the description of this video and you can explore that topic more broadly. But generally my advice for this developer and for some juniors of you do not over engineer, stick to good simple practices for CRUDs in Laravel, which is validation, eloquent and redirect somewhere with error messages. Again, it's my personal opinion. Do you agree with that opinion? Or would you have another advice for that developer seeing that code? Let's discuss in the comments. And if you want to get more tips from me, you should follow me on Twitter where I share and retweet a lot of things about Laravel. And also you can subscribe to my weekly newsletter, which I send every Thursday. So join 5000 people or more at this point to get 20 plus articles about Laravel every week. And see you guys in other videos.